welcome to the first in a series of videos dedicated to chemical nomenclature. This is truly the language of chemicals. Like all other languages, it has a set of rules and regulations that guide it. If you hope to speak and understand that language, you need to study these rules and learn to apply them. In this video, we will be talking about nomenclature in general and setting the scene for more in-depth studies later. Let's begin with the basics. The definition of nomenclature is the systematic process by which we express chemical compounds so as to convey their chemical composition through the use of words and symbols. That's about as confusing as you can get. There are lots of big words in there. So what does it mean? Well, at the heart of it, names of chemicals tell you what is in a compound and how much of it there is. For example, let's say I told you that we would be working with iron 2 oxide in class. If you speak the language, you can tell me a number of things about this material. It contains iron and oxygen. Each iron atom in the compound has lost two electrons. The iron and oxygen are combined in a one-to-one -one ratio, so the chemical formula is FeO. As you can see, large amounts of information are conveyed with a name. This is what makes understanding this language vital for communication within chemistry. Not all nomenclature is created equal. It is important to understand that there are different rules depending on the classification of material that you are working with. When it comes to chemicals, there are two major classifications, organic and inorganic. Organic materials all contain carbon. Carbon has abilities other atoms do not, and therefore can form a tremendous number of compounds, many containing hundreds to thousands of atoms. Many are found in biological systems and are incredibly complex. Inorganic, on the other hand, deals with non-carbon compounds. These compounds are often the basis of minerals and rocks. However, they do find their way into biological systems. These materials are far fewer in number than organic materials. For that reason, we will focus on inorganic nomenclature within the scope of these videos. Even within the classification of inorganic materials, we can further divide the materials into three different classifications. Elements, ionic compounds, and molecular compounds. We will explore each of these in depth and individually over the series. Each has subtle differences based on the nature of the material itself. Being able to switch back and forth between the different subsystems of nomenclature is an valuable skill. As a parting thought, remember that speaking a language is a process that requires a great amount of thinking when first learning that language. If you continue to use it and practice it, the language eventually becomes second nature. Don't expect to get it right away, but with hard work, you can master the language. The next video in this series will address elements, the smallest of the inorganic groupings.